Good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning to Bell Company United Methodist Church. Whenever we go to sing the hymn this morning, I'm going to ask you how many people know that know that hymn done. Uh, immortal, immor invisible God, only wise. And uh, we won't, we're going to have a raise of hands. And if not many of you are like me that don't know it, she's going to play it through. Whether that helps, it ain't going to help me. It'll help you. <laughs> okay? Okay. Okay. Anyway, we want to welcome everybody this morning to Bell Chapel United Methodist Church. Can you please stand for a praise of this morning? Cindy a list and she'll have that in the newsletter and in case if you don't get the newsletter before next Sunday I'm, uh, Joe and uh, Joe Ross and Dave Rothacker I think are the two for next Sunday whenever the pastor asks for the offering plates you go back there and bring the offering plates and the cans forward okay so that's where we'll be on that okay uh, busy needle closing and said we are up with abundance of four or five yards that has has been uh, donated. Uh, if you can use this yard, please stop at the church weekends from 9 o'clock until 1 p.m. and pick up some yarn at no charge. All the money donated by the congregation has been used to make uh, prayer blankets and uh, baptismal blankets and are available to the pastors until they are gone. Uh, I, I know they're they did wonderful work, and I know when my wife was going through difficulty and she received that blanket, 
it meant so much, and it still means much. Uh, the busy needles is going to be missed dearly. And church, I'm here to tell you this morning, we're going through difficult times. The church is going through difficult times. But I'm here to tell you that I've been at Bell Chapel ever since about one, one year after it was built. And I see so many things in our church that are being dropped. And they're being dropped because we don't have people that want to step in and fulfill the loss of so many that were so active in our church. The answer to the church is you and I and our faith in Jesus because he's still on, he's still on the throne, he's still here and he still answers prayer and he still loves us and he's here. You're preaching, not me. <laughs> okay. Amen. Okay. Oh, what do you mean, Francis? <laughs> okay. Well, we stand to our, our call of worship. Is that that was all the announcements? Let me. Wear your face mask, and everybody's going. Okay. Let's stand for our call of worship. God, our creator, you have given us life, one gift we are not able to create by our own skills. That life is the story of our enemies. You have given us the opportunity to fill that life with the life you have given us. Grant us wisdom, O oh God, to discern between your work and our own. Let our work be yours. Gracious God, you nurture and encourage and help us to grow with grace. Grant that we may be sure in our commitment to you. Forgive our failures and show us once again our possibilities. Prepare us to be servants of your will and agents of our love for the whole world. Amen. How many know this hymn?
Thank you. No matter how dark it is, you'll always see good. When you have light, you can do that, can't you? You can see. And so it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky when he says that uh, we are the light. What he means is that because of the way we um, act, because of the words we say and the things we do, uh, people can tell that we love Jesus. And that that becomes like a light to somebody who doesn't know Jesus. To let them see what it's like to love him and to have him in us. <laughs> so Jesus is light. And he helps lead us and guide us. And then he tells us we are the light too. Because as we follow him and live like him, others can see that and come to maybe love him too. Okay. Okay. I need to get what? I have a How many do you get? Three, four. Yes. Yes. So if you all want to come and get your suckers. And then as you go into your week, um, love like Jesus did, and you will be a light. Like a light that shines. So people can see about Jesus. Got them? You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody under 20 out there? <laughs> Okay. Oh. Those noises could have been me getting up. Want to grab some? Yeah. Okay, and get some. Shall we? Anything for me? So as we come. 
come to our time of joys and concerns this morning, we want to start with any uh, birthdays or anniversaries. So birthdays. Have any birthdays coming this week? Linda Starr, you have a birthday coming this week? Do you want to tell us how many you've managed? 75. Congratulations. Any other birthdays? Any anniversaries to remember? grandson Travis and for traveling mercies today from Delbert. Pray for our nation. And our nation. Well, Jim, for coming up with a plan for back to school, it's just, it's a lot. Constructive surgery on Friday. Suzanne? I have a joy actually. Um, our kids, uh, my kids go to Indian Creek and we are going to have not a normal game camp, but at least some sort, sort of normal people down there. They get to gather with their friends and practice. joy that the kids will have some type of band camp together as they navigate social distancing and yeah. some good practices and then also continue prayers for father-in-law Dave um, that the cancerous tumor is out but it was also in a lymph node and so ongoing treatments to be figured out. Others? Um, my grandson Luke is 14. He has a hernia and he's going to have surgery Wednesday. Okay, so Traveling Mercies is as Sue heads up uh, with a grandson, Luke, yeah. who's having hernia surgery on Wednesday. Yeah. Saw some Bob. Uh, prayer for Molly and Bob. 
Molly and Bob. Molly. So prayers for wife Marge and for Bob Smith surgery tomorrow. Is that you, Bob? Yeah, Bob. Is that Bob? <laughs> Bob Smith. Bob. Oh, I did not have that on my calendar. <laughs> okay. Don't you leave before you talk to me. <laughs> Other concerns? Unspoken concerns, those of us who have those. We'll be called to prayer by singing, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And as Linda plays that again for us for a time of silence, lift up those unspoken ones that you raised your hand for. I'll offer pastoral prayer and ask you to join me. Living God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for Christ and his great love and the forgiveness that we have through him. Each day we stumble and we fall. Each day we are, are unkind and, and sometimes, oh Lord, I'm downright mean. And so, so grateful for the forgiveness of Christ so that our slates can be wiped clean and we get do-overs all the time through that grace of Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your spirit that moves within and among us. And we lift up to you this morning those we have named. We remember Travis. We remember traveling mercies for many of us, for our nation. For the schools that are trying to figure out back to school and for families who are also figuring out how to keep their children healthy and safe. We remember Jennifer. We remember band camp for those kids. We remember Dave and Luke, Molly and Bob, Marge. Bob Smith. And we remember all those unspokens that you heard and that you know that we carry in our hearts. We carry them out of concern, not worry. And so we lift them to you, asking for your wisdom, your guidance, your healing in those we remember today. We remember our world and we pray for peace where there is no peace. 
We pray for those who are suffering with COVID and pray for their healing. Remembering the families who are in grief and mourning, not only for um, family members who have died from COVID, but those of us who have lost family members and whose sorrow is heavy on our hearts today. Help us to remember that you comfort us and guide us in times of loss. We give you this worship service and pray that your spirit will continue to move and speak among us, to lead us, to guide us, to encourage us. We ask in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would please stand as we sing together our doxology to acknowledge our offerings.
salvation with fear and trembling. God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. Innocent children of God surrounded by people who are crooked and corrupt. Among these people you shall shine like stars in the world because you hold on to the word of life. This will allow me to say on the day of Christ that I, I haven't run for nothing or worked for nothing, but even if I am poured out like a drink offering upon the altar of service for your faith, I am glad. I am glad with all of you. You should be glad about this in the same way. Be glad with me. And this is the word of God for the people of God. And may God add his blessings to the reading of his word this morning.
instructions for the Philippians. In terms of leaving town, it's that he doesn't know if he's going to get back to see them or not. He doesn't know if he will live or die, as we talked about last week. So this book to the Philippians is kind of his leaving town list of instructions and encouragement to the people of Philippi. And so he continues with some of those instructions in the passage of scripture that Delbert just read for us. The first thing he wants the people in Philippi to know is that God enables them to follow Christ, not Paul. He wants them to understand that whether he's able to come and see them, whether they never see him again, it's okay because God is the shaker. God is the mover in their lives, not Paul. Paul has been a servant to them to tell them and to teach them about Christ. But it is God who it will enable them to stay faithful and will continue to be with them. He tells them that it's actually their job to will and to want and to act and to live faith in Christ. That it takes a willing heart wanting to be faithful to Christ and to the ways of Christ. And that it then needs to be put into practice. They need to live it, the ways of Christ. So he is letting them know that they will be empowered, God will empower them to help them live faithfully in Christ. Because they feared if Paul were out of the picture, that they would just crumble and stumble and fall away. And he's letting them know that, no, that's not going to happen. God is with you. God is with you. And as you're willing to live and to work to follow Christ, all will be well. Because you're following Jesus for a lifetime, as we talked about last week, of what it takes to keep following. Uh, there's the trust of enabling God. And then there's our participation in walking and in following the ways of Christ. So what he lets them know is that it's actually their responsibility to work out what he calls their own salvation. It is their job to keep following Jesus. It's not on call for them to be faithful, but it's on them to remain faithful. And we remember that Philippians is to a two thumbs up church. When Paul is saying these things to them, he's saying it to people who are faithful. He is saying it to people who are living and doing the ways of Christ and following the ways of Christ. He's using this as sort of a pep talk to them. We remember that this would have been read in worship to them. And so it is Paul's leaving town list, but it's also his pep talk to some very, very faithful people to just encourage them and to remind them that they can keep following Jesus, that God will be with them and enable them to do it. When he speaks about doing it with fear and trembling, it's not so much about being afraid of God and that God is going to zap them, okay? Not that kind of fear and trembling, but it's a fear and trembling that acknowledges that we can't do it alone. They can't do it alone that they are a body of Christ together, and that, that fellowship is a source of strength and a source of encouragement to them, enabling them along with God to stay faithful and true to Christ. So the fear and trembling is knowing that on my own, I am insufficient to follow Christ. I need the power of God, and I need the community, the body of Christ. I need both. 
and that that's part of the working out of our walk with Christ throughout our lives. He talks, too, about being children of God without fault. I do okay with the being a child of God, but without a fault thing is really bad because I have faults. But again, he's encouraging them to remember who they are and whose they are and to be children of God without fault. It's at that point that he talks about doing things without grumbling or being angry. Um, and so later in his gospel, or his gospel, later in the book of Philippians, he will talk about two women who are struggling in their relationship with each other. Okay? Because in the body of Christ, we sometimes struggle with our relationships with one another. And he's actually pointing back to when Moses was leading the Israelites in the wilderness. And they were upset because they were in the desert, they were hungry, they were hot, um, and they started grumbling and being angry with Moses for leading them out of Egypt that still had its comforts even if they were slaves. So he's trying to link all these pieces together. The struggle of the two women in the body there in Philippi that he'll talk about in a few chapters. He's also tying together the grumbling that the Jewish people were aware of of the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness. And so he understands and yet calls them to lay that aside, to put that aside, and to be children without fault. Ultimately, he is talking about transformation, encouraging them to continue to go on in Christ, to mature in their faith, to grow up, and sometimes the word is even sanctification, of giving more and more and more of who we are to Christ, of learning more and more about what it is to follow Christ, and that it is a process of maturing as we follow him. There have been times, and I've shared before, of just sometimes how hard it is to keep following Christ. And Paul lets the Philippians know over and over that if they hang in there, if they hang in there with God and with Christ, they're going to continue and they'll keep walking in the ups and the downs and even in the blahs and the dry spells, but to keep walking. I came to Christ during a retreat when I was 17 years old and just on the 18th of July, I celebrated my 45th birthday in Christ. And when I left that retreat, the leader of the retreat uh, whispered these words in my ear. He said, Diane, don't quit. Diane, don't quit. And on some days, that's all I can tell you, is that I have not quit. I've continued. I haven't stopped. I haven't quit trying to be a follower of Christ. When it's been easy and happy, and when it's been hard and dry, I can say I have not quit. And I say that very humbly because some days, and there were years even, when that was about all I could say was that I hadn't quit. I wasn't ready to stop following the ways of Christ. But boy, was it ever hard. So when Paul is talking about God enabling, when God, when he's talking about the one who began a good work in you will finish it, I've lived that. No. 
that it wasn't about Diane staying strong. It was about the Spirit of God staying strong and hanging on to me while I held on as best I could. And so this may be a great day for all of us, a strong day, or some of us may be hanging on. And if we're hanging on, I just encourage us, just keep going. Keep going. Because God will enable us to stay faithful. God will enable us to stay true. Even when we are powerless. It doesn't make sense, does it? Does it? There's another place where Paul talks about when he is weak. Christ is strong. When he is weak, Christ is strong. And I have been able to experience that at times. When I have been weak, still Christ was strong. Living and moving and working in me and through me. Because as Paul said, it's not about him, it's not about each of us, but it is about the power of God in Christ, in each of us. And that the fun part of it is that we get to shine like stars, is what Paul says. He says, God will enable you, and you will be shining like stars in a corrupt world. And as we follow Christ, you can see us. You can tell by the way we act, the way we speak. And so today, if you're going to be a little playful, I have little spongy star stickers for you. I put these on the plates on Monday, so all my germs should be off and dead. Okay. And four of us are going to walk the trays to us, and you'll pick stars. You can take one, you can take two, or whatever. But the idea of the star is for it to be a reminder. To put that sticky star somewhere in your life where it's hard to shine for Christ. When we need to be reminded to shine for Christ. Um, maybe it needs to be on our phones for those robocalls. Um, maybe it needs to be on our steering wheels as we drive. Um, maybe it needs to be on our computers or at our desks at work or wherever. But the idea is to let it be a reminder that wherever we go, we are a witness for Christ. And so, um, Betty, if you'll help me, and then Francis and Glenn have the other trays. And we're just, just pick your stars. If you got a couple places where you need stars, um, you can have a couple of them. Okay, if you'll come. I'll go, I'll take the far side.
There are more left if you need them. Out there. <laughs> okay. You find them somewhere else. Um, and then, if you'll continue to be playful with me, um, we're going to do that little Sunday school song, This Little Light of Mine. You know? And so, uh, we're going to let it shine. And so, the playful part is that you actually put your finger up like this while we sing. Okay? <laughs> and then the more playful part is when we get to verse 2, it's hiding under a bushel, and we go, no! Okay? And then you got to jerk and shout. Anyway, I'll be happy if you just keep your finger up. <laughs> and then the last one is everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. These days are so hard for everybody right now that to shine for Christ with love and grace is so needed, so needed out when we leave this place. So let us stand and sing together this little light.